Here's a real quick introduction to 3D graphing to get us going. Um, and also a test of a different video capture system. We'll see how it works. So with three dimensions, um, let's first look at plotting points. I just wanted to emphasize a few subtleties that the book might not really emphasize. Uh, or they might just be easier to get from a video. So there's going to be three axes. So this one, traditionally we're going to put the x-axis coming out. We want to picture that as coming out of the paper. Of course we can't do that, but it's going to draw it in perspective. Um, here's the y-axis going this way and the z-axis going this way. And the thing I always tell my students is the goal here in any of our 3D graphs, or almost all of our 3D graphs, is to create a half-ass picture. Do not think you have to do it perfectly. Do not think it has to be wonderful. And do not think you have to have any artistic ability. I don't. And I can manage this, so you can too. So plotting points, we want to pl plot a, um, a point in here with some way of suggesting exactly what its x, y, and z coordinates are. Well, um, that's a little tricky because the same point, uh, like, like this thing, I'm I seem to be pointing at the origin here. But I could be pointing at something that's kind of above the origin, sort of towards the camera or even further from the camera. So that can be tricky. But one way to get around that is, for example, if the point P is, let's say, 2, comma, 3, comma, 1, I want a point that is 2 units in the x, 3 units in the y, and 1 unit in the z from the origin. Well, let's concentrate on the 2, 3 part. If I did 2, 3, 0, so let's mark off two ticks here and three somewhat equal ticks here. Then I'm going to put dotted lines out to here. And then the key to this very, very primitive kind of perspective drawing is that this is the direction that's the x-axis direction. And so I just draw something parallel to that. I'm really drawing a parallelogram, literally, on the paper. And that's symbolizing a rectangle seen in perspective. So again, when I say perspective drawing, it sounds scary. It sounds like something from art class, which I always um, uh, didn't do well at, but it just means draw parallel lines for us. Okay, it's a primitive kind of perspective drawing. So that's 2, 3, 0. That's not including the 1 yet. But then I just have to lift that up one unit. And we could be really careful when we can say mark, mark off one unit here and then kind of br bring it down. Well, let's just freehand something that looks like about one unit up. And that's going to be the point P. And you leave, and you could erase these dots to, to hide how you got that point, but it's actually, it's often good to keep them as long as it doesn't make the picture too busy. That's going to be something we'll see throughout the course, which is sometimes you want more stuff, sometimes you do start erasing stuff because the picture just gets too busy and complicated. Um, so that's an example. 2, 3, 1 is going to be 2 forward, 3 over the right, and 1 up. Um, and if we really wanted to make it fancy, we could draw... There's various different ways we could have done that. We could have gone one up and then three over, and then two to the front, or we could have gone two forward, or sorry, one up, two forward, and then over, or we could have gone through the X and then up. And notice I've drawn a, a box basically, and we're gonna, and it was a terrible box because I didn't align it very well. But um, we could always, in theory, draw all these dotted lines so that the, this point is seen at the corner of a box that's whose other corner, opposite corners of the origin. So that's one example of plotting a point. Let's just do one more. Let's say if we had Q, which was, um, let's say, 1 minus 1 minus 2. Now, I've got it set up so that the first octant, it's not quadrants anymore, there's eight of them. The first octant is facing us, which is fairly standard, although you can rotate things uh, to, for convenience sometimes. Um, and this is not in the first octant. This guy was in the first octant. This guy is not in the first octant. That's okay. It's just going to look a little bit different. So we, it's going to be one unit in the x direction, minus one in the y, so that's going to be sort of over to here. So it's a fairly small rectangle, drawn as a parallelogram again. And then down two units, somewhere around here. So Q is something around like that. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to say about plotting points, is this 
careful systematic way of doing things if you want to be careful and if you're especially if you're new to it to try to to get a sense of where things are and really there's something very very fundamental here this idea of analyzing three dimensions by first projecting to two dimensions and then including the three dimensional later that's a utterly fundamental thing um, of analyzing higher dimensions by projecting to lower dimensions we're going to be doing that all the time sometimes without hardly even knowing it um, one other thing, one other pitfall uh, <coughs> is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, <coughs> plot, <coughs> I know, I know it's really, <coughs> really fun to listen to me cough here. Okay, it's not my day. I think that was a little bit of, uh, almond just stuck in my throat probably plotting lines or planes the book does go into this but I wanted to do my own example um, let's draw some more axes and <coughs> the tricky thing is for example if I say plot or graph uh, y, <coughs> y equals 1 <coughs> I should probably go get some water I don't know if there's a pause on this thing though. Um, that seems like, with our usual intuition, that seems like a line. Because I've told you y is equal to 1, and I ha <coughs> haven't told you x. Well, in the xy plane, it would be this line, where x is anything and y is equal to 1. But that's not the situation we're in here. We're in three dimensions now. y equals 1 implicitly means x and z are arbitrary. You've got to know the context, and our book does mention this very explicitly in one paragraph. <coughs> I sound like an, a Grandpa Simpson or something. Um, X and Z, both X and Z are arbitrary. If you know the context and you know you're in three dimensions, just because this Z wasn't mentioned doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It means that it's anything. So Y is definitely equal to 1. Let's plot all the points with y equal to 1 and x equal to anything, but with z equal to 0. Well, that would be this stuff parallel to the x-axis. And again, it's just I just draw it parallel. Um, and it's, it's slanty on the picture, just like the x-axis is slanty. <coughs> Excuse me. But z is arbitrary, so that means I can actually take this up any amount or down any amount. That's going to create a plane. Okay, so that is a plane. You might have thought it was going to be a line, <coughs> but <coughs> it's going to be a plane. <coughs> and yes, I can't talk. I really don't want to have to redo this whole thing. One more example. Uh, and I'm running out of paper. Ooh, the Sharpie went through that, th that thing, didn't it? Okay. <coughs> I know, I should redo it for so it's perfect, but I'm kind of in a hurry here. Okay, so for example, um, let's say x plus y equals 1. <clears throat> this one's actually harder than the previous example because you actually have to think about it a second to figure out what's going on. And as soon as you start thinking about it, you use your old experience, which is, oh, that's a line. It has slope minus 1, blah, 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 blah. But remember, z is arbitrary here. If I plotted this guy, x plus y equals 1 and z equals 0, in the xy plane, that uh, 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 <coughs> satisfy that. So it would be this line through here. But I can make z equals 5 minus 17 pi e whatever. And so again, it's going to be a plane. But now it's going to be kind of this diagonally plane diagonally cutting in front of the, the z axis. Okay. And we're going to practice with how to draw planes better than that, <coughs> although we're never, we're always going to look for a half s picture. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and highlight that, that pitfall, that uh, one equation is not going to be a line, because it's one equation and three unknowns, well, not just not just one equation and two unknowns. Okay.